Hi, my name is Steve Chong. It is an honor to be invited. I'm a professional photographer. I've been uh, photographing since the year 2000. I started off with uh, shooting still life, from which I learned a great deal about photography, technically, and also about composition artistically. Then I ventured into conceptual photography, where I discovered the surrealistic part of my thoughts. Later, I moved on to landscape photography. Mother Nature just owned me. I have published a book called The Light and Mist of Yuanyang, a place which I have traveled to no less than 20 times in a span of a few years. I also lead tours and organize international salons. When I was small, I've always admired the landscape images printed on the calendar. So when I developed a keen interest in photography, choosing landscape photography seemed like a natural choice. I'm always at all looking at the beauty of nature. I first picked up photography near the end of 20th century. That sounds like a long time ago. Actually, it was like 20 years ago. I was fascinated to see as how camera could capture a moment and turn it into eternity. Marching further into photography, I found anticipating the unexpected event be the act of Mother Nature, a moment which was the result of an event, such as human reaction or even a thought, truly fascinated me. And this was the force that propels me to further my march. Apart from watching movies and reading, I also enjoy looking at paintings, especially the surrealistic art pieces created by Salvador Dali and René Magritte. Other than that, I also like to look at the work by other surrealistic artists. As far as photography is concerned, the meticulous Ansel Adams' work, both technically and artistically, inspired me during the early stage of my photography. I like the rare moments created by Mother Nature, such as the unexpected change of scenery. For instance, the ray of light, the awesome clouds, the dazzling reflections, the marvelous colors, and etc. This is a tough question actually. All the destinations are unique in their own ways. They would easily become my favorite. Even after a single visit, and to pick one single image as my favorite will not do justice to other photos. However, if I were to pick one brutally, perhaps it would be the one on the cover of my book, The Light and Mist of Yuan Yang. The ray of light and, the, and how the cloud moves gradually to the center of the light, which in turn breaks the light, left a profound impact on me. I realized since then the endless possibility in photography. It depends on my desire to bring the images into life especially with my conceptual work. Sometimes I could get a scene ready in a matter of days and other times it may take weeks. The eye hand series took me more than a year to create 
and brought them into reality. What I like about the Haida filter system is that there is virtually no color cast on the ND grade, big stopper and other filters. The ease of use, such as the M10 and M15, it only takes a matter of minutes to set up. Currently, I'm using the M10 system more often, combined with the Red Diamond series, Big Stopper, and sometimes the polarizing filters. I use filters when the situation requires me to do so, such as uh, shooting sunset and sunrise, and also when I want to add the blur effect to the clouds, water, or any moving subjects. Light trail is another example. Well, other than acquiring the associateship from the Royal Photographic Society of Great Britain, but wait, that cannot be regarded as a prize, isn't it? Perhaps it was the gold medal that I won in Austria Super Circuit some time ago, now called the Turenberg Super Circuit. And I was fortunate enough to go to Linz in Austria at a prize giving ceremony. It was a memorable event. Yes, I do join photographic tours, but I rarely do so these days. I organize a photographic tours myself. As far as fond memories are concerned, I have too many unforgettable ones. Perhaps I could talk about the episode I had at the base of Mount Everest. A few of my tour mates and I went up to a hill to wait for a sunset. The idea was to use the pagoda as the foreground with Mount Everest as the main subject, obviously. We went early, way too early. Sunset will take place at 9.30, but we are already up the hill around 4. The weather was fine in the beginning, but the wind was getting stronger as minutes passed by. So strong that we can't even set up the tripod at the normal height. We have to lower it while sitting on the ground. We waited patiently. The weather was getting colder and the wind cuts like a knife. We have finished our snacks and water. Finally, the moment arrived. But alas, the colorful clouds were at the opposite side of Mount Everest. How we wish we could direct the clouds to the top of Mount Everest. And there were no golden rays shining on the mountain either. The mountain looked pale and nothing was like what we had anticipated. A few of my two mates had given up and wanted to retreat. However, after some persuasion, they decided to hang on for a while. And I'm glad they did. Suddenly, we saw there was a ray of light appearing at the bottom part of Mount Everest. It appeared as though someone had switched on the spotlight and beaming it at Mount Everest. What was even more astonishing was that the light was moving up gradually. I was absolutely thrilled. I had never seen or experienced something like this in my life. Worried I might miss out a moment, I just kept firing away greedily. I could hear the two mate sights and some were shouting gleefully. When the light was finally faded, we hugged each other and tears began to fall on my face. 
I felt God has shown me His mercy for giving me the opportunity to see something so magnificent.